It's now with great joy and pride that I welcome you today to celebrate Women's Entrepreneurship Day. Let's not forget that it's recognized globally on November 19th, and today's celebration hosted by the Diversity Institute, the Women Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub, in partnership with the Toronto Stock Exchange and Women's Entrepreneurship Day Organization Canada, marks an important moment in our shared commitment to empowering diverse women entrepreneurs. It's a pleasure to be surrounded by our partners and friends within the entrepreneurial ecosystem and to come together to celebrate the achievements of women entrepreneurs. It is wonderful uh, to be home in Toronto uh, alongside my friend, uh, the Minister of Small Business, Richie Valdez, to share some absolutely exciting news for Canada's entrepreneurs. As the Minister for Women and Gender Equality and Youth, I uh, see up close that it's not always a level playing field, and that is for sure when it comes to women looking to start and grow their businesses. We are so proud, so happy to support the Women's Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub and their mission to build greater diversity in Canada's small business community. Good morning, everybody. How are we all doing this morning? <laughs> I have been so looking forward to this day. Thank you so much for being here. I am pleased to announce nearly $4 million in additional funding for the Women's Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub today. <laughs> this funding will help the hub and our ecosystem partners grow their network across sectors and across this country. I've traveled now from coast to coast. I've got one more coast to go. Um, <laughs> Um, and I've spoken to so many women entrepreneurs, and what they've asked for isn't just funding. They've asked for support. And what I'm incredibly proud of with this Knowledge Hub is the fact that we're collectively bringing together all the success stories. I want this to live for my daughter, for generations to come, and it's all got to live somewhere. So we need to continue to invest in that so that it can continue living forever. It will give the means to create more partnerships and collect more data about how and where we can best help women-owned businesses. Folks, an inclusive economy is a stronger economy, one that supports good middle-class jobs for Canadians, and even right here in Toronto. Through investments like the one we are announcing today, our government is taking concrete steps to a better, and a better future for Canadians. And the reality is without data, there is no measurement. Prior to coming on as an advisor to the Women Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub, I was a banker trying to drive a financial strategy for women entrepreneurs. And the biggest challenge that I had was answering the question, well, where's the data? What's the business case? How do you know that these barriers exist? And why do we need to look at women differently? The reality for me, it was like pushing water up a mountain in a bucket full of holes. Data is what plugs those holes. Through data, we're also able to deepen our understanding of the barriers and how we as an ecosystem respond to those barriers through our programming, through our wraparound supports, and through our genuine care to advance women's entrepreneurship. We understand that gender should not be a barrier to success. We are committed to empowering and supporting women as they pursue the entrepreneurial dreams. Through the funding efforts of We Do Canada, providing scholarships to aspiring women entrepreneurs, allowing them to access the education and resources needed to turn their dreams into reality. We Do Canada this year became a national registered educational charity that raises funds for scholarship specifically aimed at aspiring women entrepreneurs. By becoming together, and sharing our experiences and supporting initiatives like We Do Canada, we can build a future where every woman has the opportunity to pursue her entrepreneurial dreams. Data and numbers matter. They matter in your space and they most definitely matter in government because how do you create policy if you don't know who you're creating policy for? So let's start there and in this space, and what you're seeing, what has changed with regards to that data 
that we need to know about? So there's good news and bad news always. And um, the latest estimates that we have are that women are now 20% of majority owners of small business, mm -hmm. up from under 17. That's, That's amazing. Good news. Yeah. Good news. That's amazing. Women are a larger percentage of unicorns than we have seen in the past. So we are seeing some women break through what is really a glass ceiling. And we're seeing, as we get more information about intersectionality, we're getting really interesting insights. Like, if you look at the South Asian community, half of the entrepreneurs are women. Research we've recently done with the Future Skills Center shows women entrepreneurs are making a significant contribution to the move to net zero. And you mentioned there the intersectionality part because for uh, women of color, indigenous women, going to get a loan even, uh, navigating banking systems, um, just you know, starting up is different. Why is that inclusivity so important and, and why does it mean so much? Because it's an integral part to what the Hub does. I think it's, it's so important. People have heard me say this over and over. It's great to invest in programs with the word women in them. Very important. It's helped build the ecosystem. The Women Entrepreneurship Strategy is a world leader, and we have the data to show that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. It's also unique because it's a whole of government approach. But in my imaginary world. <laughs> we like your imaginary worlds. <laughs> in my For the imaginary record. world, yeah. we recognize that the money that is being devoted to women entrepreneurs or black entrepreneurs or indigenous entrepreneurs is a drop in the bucket compared to the overall investments in economic development, innovation, finance, and so on. And so where the biggest challenge is for us, I think, is to unlock those barriers in the ecosystem to really, frankly, challenge financial institutions to do a better job. The systemic barriers in terms of how risk is assessed were based on systems designed by men for men. Why do you think it's important to invest in women's entrepreneurship? Why is what we're doing here today so vital? Because it's really difficult. Most of us don't wake up in the morning going, yeah, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. <laughs> like it just doesn't happen that easily. It takes support, it takes um, funding, it takes capital to get started. And it's amazing what happens when that woman who finally gets access to capital gets the support that she needs. It's amazing where she can go. Opening the market is a long-held tradition and a proud one for TMX Group, for our stock exchanges, and also, of course, for Canada. You might find it surprising to hear that most of the public companies in Canada that list and trade on our exchanges are, in fact, not large at all, and are actually medium and even quite small-sized companies. This makes Canada unique in the world and provides entrepreneurs with real options for growing and for scaling their businesses. Thank you very much for coming and cheers to you all.